I did the pouring liquid in the cylinder head test and immediately the exhaust valve started leaking quite a lot. And in fact, comparing this valve seat to that one, even though the valve's not out yet, both valves are sort of uniform in colour, but the seat on the outer part here, or around the sort of cylinder head there, is quite a lot of, sort of broken away carbon, and it's not uniform all the way around, so I'm suspecting burning on the outer part of the seat. Anyway, this is the uh, slightly Heath Robinson, but works very well, valve lifter that I made about 20 years ago. Block of wood up the, uh, up the hole, and then a couple of washers and a nut on here. In fact, I should have taken the other nut off the other end. Haven't used it for a little while, doesn't matter. So nut on there. Wind it up to a sensible amount. Just shorten it a bit more. Again, this is one of these sort of 10 minute lash up tools that actually works a treat. There we go. Pop the uh, collets. Magnetic screwdriver. Cheeky blighter. Nearly out. Slightly fiddly. There we go. Second one. Pop the top off. Let's just take the uh, tool away again. Let's put it back together so we don't lose any bits. Springs a bit carbony, they usually are. They get quite hot at the base. And here comes the valve. It's not hung up. Hmm, interesting. Oh, it's probably got one of the little clips around it. Did I put them back? Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. The factory ones had a little circlip around them. Stop the valve dropping out. Usually don't bother with them, but maybe I did there. I want to investigate that a little further. Right, well, I just tapped the valve out. Um, I didn't use anything nasty, a little piece of aluminium bar and a hammer. It didn't have a clip around the top here, but there's an awful lot of carbon around it. And uh, it's now quite, quite happy, but it wasn't. There was a lot of carbon up around there. So I'm suspecting I mean, the valve looks okay. I'm suspecting the valve just stuck. I once had a stuck valve before. Um, 2010, I was coming back from the Tisted flying in Hampshire. It was the first long journey I'd done in the airplane for years. The airplane had been grounded for a few years, only because we had rather a lot of children. <laughs> Went from being a confirmed bachelor to a father of three in a matter of a few years foolish things one does. And um, I didn't fly the airplane for a while. It sort of lived in the garage. I did quite a lot of things to it in the meantime. Anyway, I this was with the other engine, the one that had the broken crankshaft in the end. Still got it. It's um, Apart from the broken crank, it's a bloody good engine. Anyway, I came back from Tisted, which is about three hours each way, and I was about a mile from Old Roach when one of the exhaust valves stuck open. And I glided down because the engine stopped again, and I stopped right outside the hangar doors. You sometimes wonder if someone is actually looking after you. Anyway, I don't know whether I can take a picture of that valve seat, but the valve seat is perfectly all right. Um, it just needs the valve grinding in again and a bit of a clean. This <laughs> was slightly disappointing, really. It's caused an awful lot of trouble for what was a gummed up valve, but you know, that's what happens with valves. I'm going to clean this on the machine next door, on the wire wheel. Um, so look at it there, it's nice uniform color. 
I know it looks sort of quite whitish, and you think, oh, is it running too lean? But the um, mixed, it doesn't have a mixture control. They're fixed jets in the carburetor. I haven't changed them. They're the standard things. I think it was just bad luck. There's the carbony stuff. If you can see that there, all in the in the bottom groove. Now that groove sometimes has a, a little circlip in it to stop the valve dropping in. I never bother with them. I just don't see the point whatsoever. Um, and so I don't bother. But the little groove and that area had quite a lot of carbon stuck to it. These are original valves. They're the small 3 8 valves. There are some, so that's 0.375. There are 0.400 valves as well, um, which you can ream the existing guide out and put the, the slightly thicker stem valve in. Anyway, I think I'll go and clean that up and then we'll try probably grinding the valve in. Valve has been cleaned up on the wire wheel next door. Um, seems perfectly okay. I'm just sort of looking around it in the light here as I twiddle it in front of the camera. It's fine. I've cleaned the stem as well and the, the grooves for the collets and that treacherous little circlip um, groove as well, which I think was possibly the cause of the trouble with a carbon buildup. So the next thing I'm going to do is grind that in. I'm just going to do the exhaust valve. The, the inlet valve. Inlet valves don't suffer like exhaust valves. Exhaust valves sit in the heat. Um, you know, they're just burnt by exhaust gases. They, they pour things. It's the most stressed part of the piston engine, really, is the exhaust valve. The inlet valve, of course, runs in the cold charge. It gets cooled by the incoming charge every time. It doesn't suffer at all. And so inlet valve seats very rarely leak. Anyway, I don't know where this came from. It's probably my like grandfather's or something. It's fantastic. Carborundum. Silicon carbide, grease mixed, British made, hurrah, when we used to make things in Britain. Made at Trafford Park in Manchester. That's where they built the Hilson Praga, of course, and, uh, and British Model T Fords and all manner of other wonderful things. Well, imagine having industry. Everything is useful as that these days. Bullshit, mainly. <sighs> Sound like a grumpy old fool, don't I, really? Anyway, let's stick a bit of a uh, carburandum on this. And uh, I'm sure other fellow aeroplanists have got something similar to this. It's a, a normal valve stickery thing on a long bamboo cane for reaching down. Let's hope it's got enough stick on it to stick on. Anyway, that'll do. Let's see if we can get it in there. There we go. I don't think it's going to take that much grinding to uh, get a reasonable seat because, to my surprise, the, the seat is fine. I bought about 20, 20 rolls of kitchen paper earlier on my way back from Bobbin as well, because cleaning these engines up is a foul, foul task. And no point using rags or anything you might want to use again or anything. Just use paper like this, chuck it in the chuck it in the bin, and you can use it to light the bonfire or something. It's all nice and all nice and oily. <clears throat> That looks pretty good. I'm going to go and get a torch, actually, because between takes two or three, my wife appeared and wanted the torch for taking the dog down the lane. So um, dog is back now and wife. Well, I hope they're back. So um, go and get the torch and uh, inspect that seat. It looks pretty good. But I just want to put a, a good bit of light on it and be sure. That doesn't look bad at all. Pretty good. But I think just for luck, a bit like the Irishman who wore two condoms, to be sure, to be sure, I'm going to grind the valve in once more.
and uh, then it will be done. And I think given that one valve stuck through carbon and I think the, the inlet valve needs to come out, but I think I should do the exhaust valve on the other cylinder because it'd be a bit bloody silly to uh, only do this one and then find <laughs> that flying it back from Bob into Roach tomorrow, it does exactly the same thing when I get to Roach. I wonder if it only stuck at sort of low RPM when it was throttled back. I wonder if the sort of lesser RPM was part of the devil and actually with with sort of full throttle on or wasn't far off full throttle because I was heading over for a bacon sandwich and Dotty was going to go home fairly soon afterwards. So uh, we'll never know, I suppose. You know, it's very pleasing that it's not an expensive job. I think that'll do it, to be honest. I'll just um, show you the valve. The valve's not perfect. It's got a little bit of pitting on it, but they tend to slightly anyway. I... Uh, you can have a top overhaul again at some point. The nice thing about these engines, unlike a Lycoming or a Continental with a split centre case, of course, you know, when you pull a cylinder off a Lycoming or a Continental, you're actually disturbing all the main bearings and everything too. So it's really worth avoiding. But with these little crankcases, you're pulling the cylinders on and off has no effect on the bottom end whatsoever. So you can sort of care to pull a cylinder off for investigative work without uh, any great worry. That's not bad, that's good all the way around. It shows the valve isn't bent as well. So we'll look at the seat again. Oh yeah, that's that's cleaned up even better, that's, that's good. It's got a really nice uniform seat. There's no pitting, no burning. I reckon that's that's good. Excellent. Well, that can go back together. Other than, I think the spring needs a bit of a a ride through the wire wheel to get rid of all that kind of built up crud around the bottom, which is sort of grease. I know I tend to grease the valves rather a lot. Maybe I've been victim of my own enthusiasm. For smothering the valve gear with grease with my little greasers that I made to go in the uh, in the rocker boxes but I prefer too much lubricant than not enough I think. Back to Jeremy Thorpe again. Anyway I think that's it for tonight. I think I'm gonna call it a day there and we'll pick this up again in the morning. It's now well after 10 o'clock. Um, I don't particularly want to burn the midnight oil. It was quite a long day today and uh, I think um, let's go to sleep on this. Um, I'm going to do the other cylinder. I'm not going to film that because it's just going to be a rerun of what has already gone on. And um, sort of get it ready to take all the bits back to Bodmin tomorrow and uh, put it together. Um, I'll see you in the morning. Good morning. After I turned off the camera last night, I actually sorted out the other cylinder, uh, which is this one. And no great surprise, the exhaust valve was quite gummed up. And I think it was almost a dead heat race as to which one was going to stick first. So that's done. And, you know, no, no trouble with the seat or anything. It, it lapped in again without any trouble at all. So I'm very pleased with those. So this morning I'm just sorting out fixings and things. I'm just running all the cylinder base studs down the UNF tap um, just to make sure the threads are nice and clean before I wind them on. Um, no reason why they're not. This one's going straight down pretty much. Yeah, so I don't like bad fixings, sort of irritate me, that sort of thing. Anyway, so I'll finish that in a moment. And then uh, the rocker boxes, I, I put seals on them to stop grease coming out. They're usually a metal to metal or often a metal to metal finish because they have grease inside anyway. It tends to ooze out and I cut them out of cereal packet. In fact, 
Tool packet is perfect and even says so on this one, which is nice. So I'm going to go in the kitchen in a moment and cut those out. It's freezing outside. I know for all you chaps who live in North America, and sort of changing cylinders in Timmins, Ontario, and all manner of really cold stuff like that. Um, it's not really very cold at all, but it is by British standards, and the airplane's in a very cold hangar. If I leave it an hour or so before I go up to the airfield, I can actually push it outside. There's not much wind today, and I think I'll reassemble it in the sunshine. It shouldn't take very long. So I'm just sort of spending some time getting everything ready, making sure I've got all the right tools. There's a couple of things I want from the hangar as well, so I shall go to one airfield via the other. They're only 10 minutes apart. I make sure I've got everything I need to get the airplane running and back in its own shed by this evening. It took about an hour to put the engine together. I decided not to film it, mainly for reasons of not wanting to get grease and oil all over my new snazzy iPad. And anyway, it was a distraction too. It started easily, much more so than it has in recent times. I warmed the motor for about 15 minutes, then shut it down, checked the valve clearances again and made sure everything was tight. The licensed engineer who oversees all my maintenance based in the next door hangar. So he came and gave it a once over as well. And then it was time to head back to Roach.
So that's it really. Um, the airplane is back in its shed. I'm back at home. Who'd have thought so much, uh, or a little bit of carbon would cause so much trouble, but there we are, lesson learned for me. And uh, thanks to all my friends who helped out. It was uh, very good of you all to run around and give me a hand and all the rest of it. Really much appreciated. I have to admit, I forgot my toolbox this morning. I only realized once I opened the car up, I'd taken the cylinders into the hangar and had one of those dull moments. I nearly rang the teenage getaway driver to uh, come and bring my toolbox over to Bodmin. Then I remembered in the back of the airplane is what I call the Llewellyn bag. So I set myself a bit of a challenge to put the airplane back together, only using the contents of the Llewellyn bag. That's the third time it's come in handy. I had a broken pair of points a while back and a broken point spring. Both were fixed in minutes using the contents of the bag. Um, absolutely brilliant. Doesn't weigh very much. It's a couple of pounds, I suppose. Uh, it's got quite a lot of spares in it. It's very carefully packed with sort of fold away tools and plug spanner and all manner of things that are really light. Um, get yourself a Llewellyn bag and uh, practice glide approaches. Both might be really handy one day. Thanks for watching.